Hi guys, Missy Billingsley here. I wanted to do a quick video for you to show you how to use this really cool foot. It is called the Bias Binding Foot. Um, the Bias Binder, there's the item number. This fits on almost all the Baby Lock machines, especially if it snaps on. And so it's a pretty awesome little foot. It is great for binding the edge of two pieces of fabric, tea towels, pockets, um, face masks, um, you name it. It's just a great little foot. And so what it does is it gives you a tie or a bound edge that looks like this. Okay, so I wanted to show you how quick and easy it can be to use. You do have to practice with it. And so I'm going to show you some tips and tricks along the way to make it easier for you, I hope. All right, so I'm going to take my fabric. This is actually a straight cut fabric. This is not a bias cut fabric. You can use both with this binder. Uh, bias will actually give you a little stretch and give, so it's a little easier, but you can also have great results with straight cut fabric as well. All right, so I've cut my fabric at a point, and this is cut one inch wide. That will vary a little bit according to what type of fabric you're using, but this is just a simple quilter's cotton, and uh, this was cut one inch wide and then cut at a point. So I'm going to feed that point into the binder. Okay, so I'm going to feed it in. And when it comes out the tip, this is where you're going to want to grab a pair of tweezers or something and grab that little point right there and help it out. So I'm going to push it through. This is where it can be a little finicky. And this is also where I recommend that you put the fabric in the binder when it's off the machine not on the machine because it's way easier off the machine so i'm going to pull that through and my fabrics that are underneath the foot you want to be sure they're folding to the inside and i'm just going to give it a little tug just to kind of straighten it out because like i said this is a straight cut fabric not a bias cut we want to make sure it's going in nice and straight all right so once you have that on the foot then we're going to attach it to the machine all right, so we'll go ahead and lower the presser foot, and we'll do some test stitching. You always want to test your fabric first, and with this, since we're doing the strap of a mask, we can test it for a good little ways. And so ideally, what this is doing, these two sides over here, they're being folded to the inside on the bottom and on the top, so you won't have any raw edges. And then the needle position is coming down just inside that folded edge to hold everything together. And so then as you stitch, we're gonna kind of watch it. I'm gonna kind of tr try to keep it folded in right here. So this is not one where you can go super duper fast because you do wanna kind of make sure that this stays going folded to the inside because sometimes it'll kind of kick up and when it kicks up, then it gets out of place. And so you wanna kinda of keep it so you make sure that it's rolling to the inside. And so what it's doing out, oops, see, see it's raised up a little bit right there. I know it's kinda of hard to see, let me zoom in a little bit. So I'm just gonna kinda of roll it back out and make sure it rolls in. There we go. So I'm just watching it to be sure it stays rolling to the inside. And when I get to almost the middle of this strap, this is just cut the width of the fabric, which is about 45 inches wide. And I can kind of feel this is my fold right here from the center of my fabric. Then I'm gonna grab my face mask that I've prepared. This is um, one that I prepared earlier. And so it's uh, started out as a seven by nine piece of fabric, two of them, stitched it, added a pipe cleaner, folded in my pleats, stitched them down, and now it's ready to have the strap attached. So this side right over here, this is, there's an opening right here. Okay. And yours may be pretty close together. You may have to kind of twist a screwdriver in there to open it up a little bit. And so you can get fabric in there easier. So what I've done is I've already done that to mine. So now I'm gonna feed my mask in there, right side of my fast mask facing up, and I'm just gonna continue on. I'm gonna kind of push it down till it starts coming out the end of the attachment. There we go. Once it starts coming out at the end of the attachment, it's gonna pretty much pull in the mask itself. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm just watching to make sure everything stays nice and smooth. There we go. And my mask part is finished. I'm ready to go ahead and finish out this strap and then do this next side. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish out this piece of fabric and then when it finishes, I'll go ahead and show you. So when it finishes, I can cut the straps to whatever length I need and then I'll just tie them in a simple overhand knot at the end to make sure that they're nice and secure and they won't come unstitched. And then I'll have um, some nice little masks. These are not to replace any of the filtered masks or anything like that. They are just simply to cover and to help. But this strap is pretty darn easy once you get the hang of it. You do have to practice a little bit. I know several of my friends have had a bit of a difficult time with it. But that's how easy it can be. So there's the front. Looks pretty good. And then we flip it over. There's the back. That looks pretty good too. So if you have the bias binder foot, you should definitely try it. It can make your life a whole lot easier. It may cause you some frustration too, but in the long run, when you practice and you learn it, it'll make a whole lot of difference. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to use the bias binder foot, and I hope you have great results with it. See you next time.